y'all i know my camera is trash lately um i'm so excited y'all my dreams has finally came true after being in a cesspool i don't like arizona y'all i don't like phoenix with like six to eight percent of black people in the entire city not just an area the entire city it's gotten better but i'm over it so my husband finally not first of all let me back up y'all know i've been mentioning my husband and i uh we've been doing stuff around the house and but he's really been kicking it into overgear the last year or so this year well the last two years he's been really kicking it into open gear and it's a seller's market so he's like okay what part of texas do you want to move back to i'm like really <laughs> i'm faking it but i'm like really he's like yeah if you what part of east texas you want to move back to y'all he's like he even moved back to east texas baby um he's like yeah that way you know you can be closer to your family and friends so you know even if you want to move back to where your your best friend my best friend love we can he doesn't mind we can live there i'm like thank you y'all finally so moving back y'all within the next two years two years we have a two-year plan to sell this house and it's a seller's market so these houses girl bank I don't know how much this is gonna go for. We bought it for a little under 200,000. I believe it was like 185 to be exact. But someone with this same floor plan sold their house for 360, yes. And I get it right now, it's a seller's market, but also when buying. So we would definitely buy somewhere in Texas. We were looking at cities right now. We would more than likely rent a condo or you know rent a house for a couple of months and then find uh, a house, you know, in Texas, y'all, in, in the Dallas area. My place is, I want to move to a small town that has that small town feeling. Hell, I would be okay with moving back to Denton, where UNT, where I went to college. Denton, I don't know if my best friend likes Forney, so I don't know about Forney. Um, he's like, well, do you want to move back to Longview? I'm like, hell no, <laughs> there's people trying to get out of East Texas, no. Um, yeah, so two year plan to move back to Texas. And so simultaneously, we're getting our passports. Yeah, I already have my passport. I need to get it updated, get my name changed. And then we have to get JB his passport because we will be traveling to East Africa. My husband has been saying for years, he doesn't want to work forever. So if he can make some type of business ventures in East Africa, specifically Kenya, it's time to do it now like he's in his mid 40s it's time like it probably would have been time when we were in our 30s but it's time to make our money work for us so i'm like okay you know at first i was scared i'm still gonna probably pray about it but look i don't think it's no coincidence the way that things have been happening in my life so i'm gonna pray about it and really i want to support my husband and whatever he decides i'm gonna pray about it and just take the leap, y'all. Not too many people can say that they're willing to, you know, go to Africa and invest in whatever there is to offer. Because there's tons of different investment opportunities for people who have some, a little bit of something. We ain't got a lot of money, but we got something. Um, so, yes, I, I'm not going to share a lot about it. Because um, I know there are some people, African Americans, that have moved uh, or done different things. And they share, they overshare on their platforms i won't be doing that you know so and plus my husband will be doing most of that traveling of course we're gonna go with him i think he said he's gonna try to go next year to visit depending on how things are um and then we will go with him as a family in like three years after that but definitely you're up texas in two years and so yes i'm excited y'all i need to be close to my family right now I, it, it really does help you know to be because we don't have any family uh, and i we, i just got my tribe of friends here in, in phoenix within the last five years but that's not enough for me right now um so I'm excited yes I just want to share that y'all and I will be joining journaling that or vlogging that process of so, hey girl here is a real a real chit chat although I ain't gonna be doing shit and girl this is a real chit chat for a change um and I got notes here that I emailed myself because I'm slow um let me go ahead and bring it up y'all 
Um, we're going to be talking about talking about a different what girl that scared me we're going to be talking about all types of things girl stuff in the news um recent uh deaths nothing too personal y'all but so anyway y'all know how we do this i talk about what's going on in my personal life i talk about what i'm watching on youtube and what i'm watching on tv so how y'all doing girl we made it it's over a year we've been up in these pandemic y'all sometimes when i wake up i'm like i can't believe it i cannot believe this is happening i mean does it feel like you're living in a dream like can we go back no we can't it is what it is home is going well we finished homeschooling last year not we finished homeschooling last week um jb like most kids his age don't like school i mean if you can ask most kids who go to school they really, they really don't care for school now there's parts of it that he does like he does enjoy all of the breaks that he's having um he told me I, I i gave him a little interview and i asked him okay baby what do you like the most about you know homeschooling he's like oh i like all the breaks i have and i like that i get to play okay so what do you like the least about homeschooling he doesn't like reading because jb um is dyslexic and he struggles with reading and so but my baby has done really well i've been so proud of him um maneuvering through this is because this has been difficult you know we we as adults it's really easy for us to complain about it but these kids are really y'all you have to understand we took them out of their school told them they couldn't see their friends for weeks um put them into virtual learning so when you have small children to make those type of changes when the children are used to um a routine and as you know at least some of them are used to a certain type of routine it could be difficult so i printed him up a little uh certificate congratulations of finishing second grade and we look forward for third grade and so for this summer i've gone ahead and signed him up for swim lessons the city of phoenix is offering swim lessons for all the kiddos and we are also going to be doing girl the reason why it's quiet right now is because his butt is at a uh, kids park which is a drop-off camp which is, i'm so ecstatic so my neighbor um they're go they're gonna do the camp together so he's gonna go there two to three times a week and then we start homeschooling again mid-august so one of the things i definitely have to do my goal and i know I, I feel like i'm repeating this this may be repetitive so i do apologize girl hold on my husband had some our blinds two of the blinds redone so this man's gonna come in here girl so one of my goals before we start with homeschooling for 2021-22 oh my god y'all is to make sure that i have as much planned because this this was my first year so i don't want to be too hard on myself but i have learned a lot i definitely want to have most of the lesson planned for the half of the year already done ready to go because we switched up i think we switched our curriculums over all three times this year before we got in we found you know a um schedule and we, before we got into the swing of things you know and it may be that way and so um one of the things that we we really enjoyed for this year was was called project based learning which is where you take a project and you incorporate different topics or subjects such as math and writing and reading so one of the, one of the ones we did was trapped in the 80s so we had to look up several incidents that happened in the 80s he had to draw we had to look at different um we looked at movies we also had a really good time i think one week where he was kind of struggling i said you know forget it child let's let's just do something totally different so we had a culture week and so we learned about Rwanda, japan canada um and so we did things like i bought him a sushi <laughs> i bought him a sushi toy and he learned how to make sushi we watched sushi videos oh and we did egypt too it was so cute we um i allowed him to play outside he dug out uh um now river i allowed him to mummify one of my barbie dolls <laughs> poor mark mark is probably still mummified child in the backyard so i think it's crucial for kids this age to play that is how they learn that, that is how they learn and one of the ways that they learn they need to play 
So um, homeschooling for us is here to stay and he socializes a lot. I think that's, that's also one of the big misconceptions with homeschooled kids, baby. We are, JB's schedule is jam packed. Like we had a birthday party this weekend. He has friends that he, if I wanted to, he could socialize with a child every day. Every day. Um, besides that, nothing else is going on. Work. My job, this is something I would advise you guys. My job is getting a little slow. And y'all know I am what's called a learning management system administrator by trade. I And what I do at my job is I organize and I coordinate online training for our clients, okay? And so we've had five client trainings this month. So one of the things that I do and I encourage you if you are, are a young professional is make yourself um, make yourself a value in your company. I'm already a value because I'm the only person that knows my job in my department but if we don't have client training coming in then is Vivian really a value? Let me tell you something everybody's replaceable. Do not think that you are not replaceable because you are baby but make your make it hard to be replaced so one of the things that i've learned to know to do hold on y'all this is vivian so one of the things that i did was i nominate myself you know i push myself to learn new things on the job if someone needs help if someone if there's an area where I could, you know, do a little bit more. If if Christine, you know, is, is needs help on something, like, hey, you do you need help on that, girl? I, I could do that for you. <laughs> there's a coordination project coming up um, several times throughout the year that I basically took over for someone else. I was like, I could do this for you if you want, girl. I mean, I, you send it to me, but I could be you, basically. <laughs> you know, I could do all of that. This is Vivian. What I'm watching on YouTube, baby. <laughs> so, first of all, I was watching. Let me pull up my notes again, y'all. Um, I don't know why this came up, and I had no idea. Y'all know who the Hodge twins are? Light skinned brothers from I think they're they're from the South. I don't know if they're from Tennessee or or Kentucky. Um, very fair skin and beautiful eyes, and probably saw like one or two of their videos a long time ago but they are on some cooning let me just say this not every black person who is a conservative is necessarily a coon that is not it but it looks like the Hodge twins first of all their audience was already a certain demographic if you know what I mean because they were silly as hell very silly but then they are on this big bandwagon of Trump supporters. And I think if you even look at their their uh, their page, it's like the big American flag. They wear hats that have American flags. And that's fine. Be, be patriotic. But at, at what expense? And then at the end of the day, you, you still black. You know what I mean? And you go, yeah. And so... I was a little surprised by that to see that they own some Candace Owens type of BS and I'm like wow very interesting so girl anyway I didn't look at their videos any videos I just saw I think I was looking at Tyrone Magnus and he was reacting to them and I was like what they are totally yeah they're do a little bit of political stuff and I'm like but y'all are not they don't come off as that smart to me I'm sorry I'm sorry, but they don't. Girl, I said I didn't want to talk about it. I said I didn't want to talk about it. Y'all, apparently, your boy, Kevin Samuels, um, was caught. No, he wasn't caught. I guess he was filming. I'm telling y'all, black women, women in general, not even black women, women in general are nosy as hell. They will look at everything. You cannot run anything. You, you can't sneak nothing past us. So let me see if I can bring it up on Lipstick Alley because I was trying to look at it this morning. I was trying to look at it this morning. Now, there was already the only thing I can agree with with that flipping Tommy Sotomayor is I believe that Kevin is, I don't believe he's gay. I believe he's bisexual. 
he is giving me i feel like at night he'd be laying down in his bed with one hand uh, under him and you know he has a bonnet on that's <laughs> So apparently, um, the thread is called Y'all Come Here, Kevin Samuels Has a Man in His Bed. Ciao. So 20 pages deep. KS is a piece of work. There, he, he is the epitome of, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Um, black women, women in gener general need to stop going on that show i think it's absolutely ridiculous one thing i will say i do think that he took a lot of points from uh, uh talking points not necessarily points from tommy tommy is right about that because i saw a little bit of his video um they were dragging him in his in his comments because a lot of men love ks if i'm looking for advice I want advice on getting a man and keeping a man and getting getting married. I'm going to want it from someone who is married, not someone who is twice divorced like KS. Um, you know what I mean? Some of the stuff he says has some value, but again, a lot of it is BS. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we ain't gonna give this man too much attention, y'all, because mm -mm, I don't want his trolls coming over my page. So now we're gonna go ahead and keep it pushing, keep it pushing. So what else I've been watching, y'all? Oh, so I came across some another young lady's post about dating in 2021. Now, mind you, I haven't been on a date at all because I I've been married. Girl, what is this girl doing? This same person has been driving around in this neighborhood. Is she doing a drive-by in her minivan? I mean, girl. Anyway, y'all. Dating in 2021. So this one girl was basically like, we didn't even go on a, you know, is there, do people even go on dates anymore, y'all? Like, those are, I mean, is people even dating in, in the pandemic? Y'all. Why is it nobody talking about all the weird stuff that is going on? UFOs. Now the Pentagon is investigating. I know some of you have already seen that video of the unidentified flying object, a UFO, and now they are legit looking into it. Baby, a couple of years ago, there was something here called the Phoenix Lights. Very, I'm pretty sure most of y'all have heard of this. Very, very popular. Tons of people saw it. Um, there are some strange things that happen in this desert. Every so now and then I'll see a, a thread. People are like, did anyone see all the lights up in the sky? A lot of people say, well, it was, um, it was satellites. They're satellites. I'm like, okay, because I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to see nothing. Um, oftentimes in a desert, especially when my girlfriend used to live here, we used to text each other and we would see these armored cars all padding like four or five of them, I know they're military, all padded up and racing through the desert. And I'm like, what the hell? This is this was before this area got really big and built up. Y'all, there's some strange stuff going on. Another thing that I read on, yeah, I'm a nerd. So apparently there is a group of scientists that have discovered some what's called ghost particles in Antarctica. So they have been um, looking at all of the matter. And the reason why they call them ghost particles is that they go outside our standard of physics. So they can't explain it. And I've read, I can't even discuss this in layman terms because I just can't. Because I don't even fully understand it myself. But the thing is, is that we are finding that not everything operates the way that we thought it did. Isn't that amazing? Not everything is operating the way, the way that mankind has thought. Because if, if it, it really boiled down to this, especially with the, the um, particles that were found up in Antarctica, that would change our standard model for physics because the particles are not operating the way our three categories go or whatever, how many categories there are. It's not operating that way. So it's got people stunned. It's got the scientists stunned. The UFO stuff, I'm not surprised. I think that our government has known about it a long time. I'm very curious as to why now they're just now 
why they are admitting to it now why why is that happening y'all make sure you cover yourself and make sure you be very very careful very careful um with what you with what you do say and all that and i'm gonna say this i don't know how many times i have to tell y'all i tried to tell y'all before you know that the storms in texas in the south last winter make sure you prep make sure you have plenty of water plenty of food plenty of tissue before this winter make sure you global global warming is is a real thing oh did y'all hear about that huge iceberg that just chipped off the size of new jersey or something like bigger than new jersey i think like seriously so anyway besides that please make sure that you are prepared um not only that but honey i was at the dollar tree dollar tree is the one of my favorite places. the dollar tree is one of my favorite places that i go to to get you know supplies prepping supplies and sure enough one of the first things i saw there last month because i don't go there a lot anymore i don't even really go out you know, at all anymore one of the first things i saw was a big sign that says it was something like get your emergency supplies here get your like they are literally telling us what to do so you better start listening like this is nothing to be the world is in it type of stuff all i'm saying is just make sure that you have enough supplies at home to help your family just in case something happens just in case there's another winter storm hell just in case our ac goes out well we have solar panel but still just have water food medical supplies especially medical supplies because we don't know what's going to happen now they have these new what the variants of um the virus and we don't know how things and how this thing is going to mutate so please just make sure that you're able to care for your family and your loved ones at the end of the day so y'all enough of that what i'm watching on tv girl i don't know why i started re-watching married to medicine i started re-watching married to medicine i believe it was season six it was the season before um dr jackie's husband was cheating on her that season before what they was looking for a new home y'all so they were looking for a new home and this is also the season where lisa thought that she could get pregnant like how old was lisa then? i think she was in her mid-40s trying to get pregnant and dr damon uh what's his name dr damon he was not feeling it child so y'all i'm watching it again and they really even though mariah could be dirty they really did her wrong i mean she deserves some of it and i think that mariah is the type of person to where she holds grudges because i remember one time i think it was either i sent quad a message and it was the episode where mariah well quad went over to mariah's house mariah was wearing this beautiful green gown child mariah is always slays i will say that and she was basically giving quad the cold shoulder like why and so i i you know sent quite a message i'm like why would she invite you over there just for her to give you a cold shoulder and treat you that way she's like child i do not know that's what i was thinking <laughs> anyway um and honey miss lucy which is mariah's mama miss lucy is a whole mess i ain't gonna talk about nobody's mama though so anyway y'all uh yeah it's really funny to see how relationships operate on tv before you before you know stuff is about to hit the fan so i could literally see the tension between um dr jackie and her husband not to give him a pass for cheating because there ain't no there is no excuse for that behavior um but i could see that he was really it was almost like at the point of or maybe he was even doing it then hell we don't know do we know was he cheating then and I'm sorry, Dr. Heavenly, even though I love Dr. Heavenly and her little ass giggle, I think it's weird as hell that she calls her husband daddy. I think that is strange. Does she have a good relationship with her father? I don't know, but I just think that's really weird that she calls him daddy. Mm. Um, Y'all, what else, what else, what else? I saw... Um, Brandy's little brother unblocked me a while back y'all ray j blocked me a while back it was been a couple of years then he unblocked me i don't even know what i said like i don't know if i called him brandy's little brother or well whoever monitors his instagram had blocked me. <laughs> but you are brandy's little brother ray j like why you get mad 
I mean, <laughs> dang. So anyway, y'all, Paul Mooney. Um, Paul Mooney, I, I <laughs> he passed away. He lived a long life. Okay, 79 years old. He ran a good race. I'm sorry, some people don't e don't even make it to 60. So 79 is a blessing. And y'all didn't know that he had twin sons, and they're very handsome in my opinion. 79, comedian genius. And the thing that kind of irks me with our people is we get so... Clearly, Paul was on was was one of the girls. You know what I mean. He was more than likely bisexual. But who cares? And so was Richard Pryor. He even said that he had sex with who was that? Oh, who was that? <laughs> Marlon Brando. <laughs> Marlon Brando. Like why the hell would you not? Marlon Brando was fine in his day, girl. Well, yes, he was, but not not the Marlon Brando and and the Island of Doctor Monroe. That's how I remember him. The Island of Doctor Monroe. You with some damn cheetahs and 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 uh, that was a weird ass movie, y'all. <laughs> Have y'all ever seen that? The Island of Doctor Mon Monroe or Monroe? That was some weird ass monkeys walking around with titties and stuff. I'm sorry, I may have to watch that movie after this just to laugh at that foolery. So anyway, um, Richard Pryor was bisexual. At least he, I don't think he necessarily consider himself these people were fluid with their sexuality so um such a loss i love that he told it how, how it was you know he he did not hold back a lot of white people couldn't handle that they really couldn't i don't think they a lot, a lot of white people couldn't handle that i think that a lot of a lot of celebrities also distance themselves from him because of that because he was like that you know what i mean not all of them but a lot of a lot of celebrities did hold on nikki's calling me hey girl it's bunny bunny it's my niece bunny why are you home who is that it's ain't real What's wrong with your screen? Baby, is my screen not on? Hold on. Hold on, baby. What's wrong with your screen, Abel? Now, can you see me? Look at my babies. Hi. Hi. Let me see you, Bunny. Hi, Hi baby. Wait, you was doing your makeup? All right, y'all, sorry about that. My babies called me. Oh, y'all, it's so funny. Like, my niece and nephew, um, there are, just to get off, not to get off subject, there are, like, six or seven, no, yeah, about five or five of us cousins that had kids all in the same year, girl. And my niece and JB are three months apart. And when I tell you, she looks exactly like my sister. I think, of course, JB looks like me, but I think that if he was a girl, that would have been my twin. Like, when I tell you this baby looks so much like my sister, it's scary. It's literally scary. Um, okay, y'all, so what I'm watching on TV, sorry. So, um, Top of the Lake, absolutely phenomenal. It stars the actress that plays in The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I forget her name. She's, you know what I like about her is that Hollywood has put this almost, um, she breaks through the barriers because she is not your stereotypical, uh, beautiful actress. You know what I mean? She's not tall. She's not super skinny. Um, she, you know, when I, she basically has made her, um, hold on y'all. This is Vivian. Okay, honey, I'm going to tell you. So, I keep getting <laughs> So sorry, I keep getting interrupted, y'all. That, but this was work. I mean, I'm technically I work from home. This was work, and I'm putting out a mini fire. So let me make this hurry up and make this 
quick. So what I'm watching on TV, Lord, y'all, Top of the Lake, great show. Like I said, has a woman uh, from um, Handmaid's Tale. I'm now on season two. Again, it is called Top of the Lake, and it is on Hulu. Um, good Girls. Speaking of Good Girls, um, they better give me what I want. So it looks like we're taking a break from Good Girls, and I guess the new episode should be up today, so I need to go ahead and watch that. I am digging Rio. Um, I did see like a, a thread or something where they're talking about make sure that you sign the petition for good girls to stay on, on and I guess they're threatening to cancel it y'all but it's okay. This season was is okay so far. Um, Jacob's Ladder. Now this one is with what is his name with the pretty eyes from barbershop y'all know i'm bad with name michael ely michael you know y'all michael ely is very private i don't blame his ass so girl um michael ely playing is he playing the um guy with ptsd or i think his brother comes back but something follows him so was starting to watch that didn't finish it but i think i will go ahead and finish that one I saw, speaking of the things following him, I saw the preview for The Conjuring, um, The Conjuring Part 3, which I love The Conjuring 1 and 2, but y'all, I can only watch those shows, those type of shows so many times, and after that, I, I get too scared. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't be doing this, girl. Um, anyway, girl, I'm, I'm just so random. Handmaid's Tale. I know that it's a bit much, but I'm telling you guys, if you can get past it, some of the scenes, it is a very good series. And so, um, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but I feel like June is slowly losing it. I really do. She's, she's losing it. So yeah. Um, what did I say? Okay. Yeah. So I'm married to medicine, but there was something else I wanted to say about the Conjuring 3. There was something I wanted to bring up, y'all, that was kind of like, I don't know, girl, but that is it, y'all. This chit-chat is all over the place. I need to get back to work, go pick my baby, go pick me up some chicken, in that order. So that is it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.